Hearing none, we'll go out of the public comment period. Um, our first item on our agenda is recognition of Bonnie Thompson, um, a retiring Morgan County Treasurer. Bonnie, I should know this. How long have you been the? 26 years. 26 years. That's a long time. That's awesome. I, I saw a quote today from Woodrow Wilson that is true of Bonnie and, and all of the members of the council who are retiring, so to speak. <laughs> it says, of public service, you're not here merely to make a living. You are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world, and you impoverish yourself if you forget the errand. And um, we appreciate your willingness to be a public servant and all of the time that you've spent. Um, that's two and a half decades. That's a long time to be in public service. And uh, on behalf of the residents of our county, thank you very much. We have a plaque that we'd like to... Thank you. is with our greatest appreciation we hereby honor Bonnie Thompson throughout your 26 years of service you have been not only a co-worker and mentor but a friend to many you have set an example to be followed in the future and cherished by those of us that were fortunate enough to have experienced it for ourselves we are going to miss you happy weekend Does it know your name? <laughs> she forgot him on purpose. No, I'm just really moved. My husband Bob, my grandson Brooks, my daughter in law Christine, and my son Brandon. This is my sister, Rhonda, and her husband Jason. And then Oh, and that's my
everyone. Thanks for being here. Okay. Our next item is recognition of our outgoing members of the County Council. Uh, Randy Averett, Tina Cannon, Roland Haslam, Roland, Robert Kilmer, and Sarah Swan. Um, so I know that this can be a difficult responsibility. <laughs> that there are, it's almost impossible to make everyone happy. <laughs> and frequently you irritate 90% of the people who are out there in front of you. And I know you get calls and emails and uh, you're challenged with respect to all kinds of issues, but I appreciate all of you. Um, Thank you. And the, um, the, your willingness to participate in the process and to be civil in our discussions, which I think we've accomplished for the most part, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I know that Many of you disagree with me on different issues, but I've appreciated the opportunity to have the discussion, have the debate, and reach resolution. And I really appreciate your service. Thank you. We have gifts for you guys as well. <laughs> Tina, do you want to take that down? Uh, sure, we'll. Since you're sticking around. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> We're definitely going to miss you guys. All of you. And we, different. we have one of these for Member Ballantyne, who we dismissed unceremoniously not a couple of months ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, because he, he, he chose to move out of his district. But unfortunately but member Averett stepped in and she's done a good job she's picked up on things and so it's been wonderful so thank you all right so that'll bring us to the business items our first item um, this is brought forward by the planning staff land sevens it's a discussion public hearing and decision on a proposed amendment to the Northside Creek development agreement updating the development timeline and clarifying the improvement requirements for the subdivision um, it's classified as an amendment, but I don't think that a development agreement was actually ever fully executed by both the county and the applicant. At least there's no record of a fully executed agreement. So it's amended and restated, it, I guess, at best. But um, as, as a as you said, Commissioner McConnell, um, this is an amendment to the Northside Creek Development Agreement. Um, it was originally done in 2007. Uh, it was approved at a county council meeting. Uh, we have that in the minutes and the motion and all that, but we don't know for sure what happened to the executed copy or if one was ever completely done. Um, the applicant is now, or uh, the property owner is now moving forward. They've done a lot of work on a uh, lake at the site and uh, building a dam and so that is happening and they would like to move on to uh, complete the subdivision and put that in place. A subdivision was uh, approved. Um, the North Side Creek TRUD subdivision was recorded in February of 20, 2009 with 22 lots and uh, 7 parcels. Um, and, and we've just kind of been going along. There hasn't been as much activity over the years, um, but planning staff and uh, engineering staff both wanted to get a firm, detailed development agreement to outline the rules and requirements for the subdivision before we uh, continued on and did a plat amendment on that property uh, where they're not going to change the number of lots, just reconfigure some of the lots. Um, but we wanted to get the development agreement done first and signed and executed so we had a clear set of rules that we were basing our information on. Um, in comparing the 2007 final draft that we do have, and I, I hope it was the right one, it's the best we have, um, there are some 
minor word changes and some fixes there. Um, there are some changes in elements that uh, uh, a little more significant, um, but probably the two largest issues um, that were really modified is um, number one was the re reconstruction of a roundabout. In the 2007 agreement, there was a reference in a paragraph that the developer had to work with and execute a Browning uh, agreement, an agreement that they had with Browning, and then it was named in the development agreement. Uh, so I guess it was a little confusing to me how the county would enforce the development agreement with a third party and, and how it was all tied together. So that's been removed. Uh, the applicant submitted the draft, but it's, it's been removed. Uh, but the same language and requirements, which is the improvements of Cottonwood Canyon, um, fixing some uh, road issues that are there, and then installing and widening it and putting in a six-foot um, trail path from uh, the Browning property all the way up to Stone, in Stone Ridge, uh, uh, all the way along that section of the airport and, and up the hill to the other sidewalk. It's part of that requirement that they will put in. Uh, they have the development, uh, the construction plans submitted. Uh, did not get time to complete it. Um, this year before it got too cold, but, um, but anyway, that's, that was one of the significant requirements from the agreement with Browning. That trail will now be in place and, and be part of that, and it's in this development agreement that it will be completed. Um, there's some other uh, minor changes, but those were the significant ones that I wanted to call out. Um, in the draft uh, that was submitted, uh, Member McConnell was listed as the attorney that, that uh, would be noticed on issues. That name, and that has been changed to Nicholas Jones. Member McConnell has been removed from that. So, um, just as a matter of, that was an issue Jan had and wanted to get changed. But just to be clear, Nick Jones is a member of our law firm. So, um, I think that's really where staff believes that the, the changes are uh, only help with clarification and understanding of who's going to maintain the open space, um, which will be the homeowners association, not the county, um, in the development. So that's really clear, and uh, the county thinks that it's a county staff recommends approval. Any questions I can answer, and then the applicant is here and would like to can also answer questions. I don't know if you want to present that or not. Just a few points. We'd like to make some points. Any questions for staff? Um, I need to find them now. Well, because one of the main issues that I have is in the 07 one, it talks about the widening of the road from Willow Creek, clear up to the development, along with the walking trail. Correct. It's not in this other one. So, to where I'm having a struggle is. We want to redo it. There, there's more than just one issue, and if you think I can find them right now, you're nuts. But there's there's been changes in the wording that's not close to the 07 one. So if we're gonna if we're gonna do something, I want I want to go back to the 07 one and work off of it, not the one that was not the ones that were submitted. Um, you got one that was submitted in. Uh, September of 2019 and another one was submitted in August 23rd of 2012 and the original one uh, was the one that was approved by the council in 07 okay there are dramatic changes between what we have in front of us and what the one is that was submitted in 07 that was approved by the council I thought you s okay I think those elements are actually addressed in the new version. There ain't nothing that talks about the new version in the new version that talks about widening the road from Willow Creek up to the development. If you look in section 5.2. 5 5.2 5 .2 does. At least that's what I read. It says, finally, developers shall repair and widen Cottonwood Canyon Road from the Wolf Ski Building to Willow Creek Road, which repair and widening will shall include a six-foot wide asphalt bike slash jogging in which yeah, one? Jogging trail. 
Looks. I'm going to add the word trail. If Page 13. Yeah. Okay. It says trail on the one. Yes. A oh, bike and jogging trail. Yeah. Well, so yeah. then maybe that's where we're having the. Located Sorry. on the airport side of such roadway and will be Problem. undertaken Where's in accordance with 13? the plans and the specs approved by the county. In the development agreement, it's page 13. No, let me back up. In your packet, it's page 35. 30, 36 in my packet. Page 36. It's page 5 of the development agreement, section 5.2. Yeah, page. All right, well, then I've got these all messed up because I, the ones I've got in front of me did not have any of that, so. So my question on that topic is, this ends, no, it doesn't. Where is phase four of the Cottonwoods? Uh, the Willow Creek Road comes down off. The Willow Creek is at the, I'm going to say the south west corner of the airport property. That's where they meet, right? So that's where. And then it says from Willow Creek to Phase Four. And phase Four would be all the way around the airport, and then up the hill is Stone Rancher Phase Four. So mm -hmm. it's almost up to the, not quite to the connection to the uh, okay. dam. And so, so in our original there, discussions on this, um, it covers all the way up to where Cottonwood takes over. Okay. So. So it goes down, then goes up Willow Creek Road to Phase Four. No, no it's Cottonwood Canyon Road. It up, ultimately up connects to, to Silverleaf. At the top. Yeah, it, I don't know come, where I don't know exactly down. where the county makes that transition, but but Cottonwood Canyon Road transitions into Silverleaf. At the top, but as we come down, I'm, I'm coming from the top down. Okay. We go past the airport. We come to Willow Creek, and from there it goes to Phase Four of Cottonwoods. No, phase four of the cotton, which is up at the silver leaf. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. So um, in this, if you read this, it says, oh, wait a minute, maybe I jumped to the trail. So what I'm trying to do is find out exactly how far they're going to fix the road. Because it was so my it'd be easiest if we bring that up because yeah. and, and widen it because yeah. the new stuff was already at the wider width. Uh -huh. And then it connects to the... Cottonwood Canyon Road, which is narrower, and that's the portion that's being widened. Yeah. So I think the drawing will help. So I was thinking we were widening and repairing that, but we were repairing Cottonwood Canyon Road all the way down to Old Highway. It's what I remembered, but it's been a lot of years. That's why I wanted to see what the old one versus the new one said. So down here in the lower portion, <laughs> So here's the southwest corner of the airport. This is where Willow Creek meets. Uh -huh. And Conway came, and you know this, but it goes all the way up and around the airport, uh, past Browning, past um, the old Browning, the ski the old site. The Wolf Creek, the Wolf property. Family. Wolf Creek, yeah. The Wolf Ski Building is what it's referred to in here. Uh, past the airport, up past. <laughs> Uh, and then all the way up past the Northside Creek actual development, and then Phase Four of Silverleaf starts in this area here, or Phase Four of Cottonwoods. I, I don't know exactly. Okay, so the walking, the bike walking trail will make that loop. We'll make that loop and go all the way up to where this sidewalk ends in Cottonwoods. Okay. To where? Right. right. No. I mean, it, I don't know that it's a complete loop, but you say you say it goes. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm Skylar Gardner, the, uh, the representative for the applicant uh, Northside Creek tonight. Is there a pointer? Sorry. That might be the easiest. It was a little bit confusing, but the original agreement identified, if you could zoom out, Lance, the Silverstone, so Silver, I think it's the Silverstone subdivision which is this subdivision here. So the trail will start here, and the road widening will occur right here on the airport side of Cottonwood Canyon Road, past the Wolf Browning building, and you can actually see it on this aerial. The road actually becomes wider at this location. Through this area, it's only about 22 feet, and it jumps to 32 feet or 34 feet in this section right here. 
so the road will be widened and a trail or bike lane identified here. And then when it gets to the wider road, the trail or bike lane will just be painted on the existing asphalt there. And that would be from here to the roundabout. And then at the roundabout, we actually pick up uh, curb and gutter. So at this location, we'll actually move it behind the curb in the right of way and come in this location here. And at approximately the apex of this road right here is where it changes from Silverleaf to Cottonwood Canyon Road. At that apex, so that pedestrians can see both directions, we'll make a crossing there. And it, when it crosses the road right there, it will connect into the Cottonwoods at Mountain Green Master Plan Trail, the six foot hard surface trail that's uh, part of the development agreement for the Cottonwoods. And then that trail actually continues all the way along this side down to the elementary school and goes down to the larger reservoir that way. Um, this, all of these details are, were actually submitted in a right-of-way permit that we turned into Lance and uh, Mark Miller. And unfortunately, when we went and met with Mark to identify, I think it's one of the exhibits in the development agreement, the areas that needed to be actually removed and repaired instead of just overlaid or uh, slurry sealed or chip sealed. And uh, public works director was there as well, uh, Heiner. Uh, when we did that walkthrough, we identified the areas that need to be removed, recompacted, reconstructed, and then a uh, slurry seal applied over the entirety of the Northside Creek Road, which would be, this is the boundary between Phase 4 and Northside Creek. So all of the public roadway coming down to right here. Uh, that was submitted in a, in a right-of-way permit that uh, we were going to try to get to this fall, but unfortunately by the time we were able to meet with Lance and meet with Mark, we ran out of the warm enough weather to Nobody would warrant any of the work in the asphalt because of the temperatures. So, and Morgan County does have that ordinance that you can't put asphalt down unless it's 45 and rising. So, so that was a lot of information. But the original agreement should identify. I think it's Silver Silverstone, a trail from Silverstone to Phase Four, and we are still planning to have a public access trail. From that, from that Silverstone access point here, all the way to where it ends at the at the Cottonwoods of Mountain Green boundary, and then they will pick it up from there. And as we've studied it, this road right here and the and the airport fence. The reason why we're proposing to simply expand the roadway instead of having the roadway improved and then some type of a borrow ditch and then another six foot trail is there's there's physically not enough room to accommodate a six foot trail along many portions of the airport fence right here so in working with mark miller and, and uh, brett heiner um, we came to the conclusion that the best application for snow removal and everything else would actually just be to expand the roadway but then identify a trail slash bicycle lane uh, right on the pavement. Um, any other questions specific to the trail? Yeah, I have a hard time with asphalt just because we've got an existing asphalt trail in the lower cottonwoods that's fallen apart that we're supposed to maintain. Um, the rest of your meandering trail that goes up through the cottonwoods is called concrete. Mm -hmm. So my question is why can't we do concrete? It's going to maintain a lot better than the asphalt? Uh, that's, that's an excellent question. We were, when we were working with uh, Mark and Brett, the, they felt that the asphalt would be the best solution and just making it a part of the road. So I don't know. <coughs> I, I would actually probably defer to them and their opinion on that. So. Okay. If the county's going to end up maintaining it, I would rec I would argue that they're wrong, and that it would be better to maintain asphalt or concrete than asphalt. We've seen the difference through the existing trails. The concrete still looks good. The asphalt's broken. The weeds are growing through. The tree roots are growing through. And yeah, and I guess my 
my response to that would be I don't, none of the existing trails are adjoined to a roadway. I'm not sure how concrete and asphalt would interact, you know, long term. <coughs> concrete has the just like it does likelihood of displace. Just like it does with all the sidewalks across the world. But right. Up well, maybe street. the curb would be a good example. Curb is concrete, so it's a, it's a little bit different structure type, but whatever the yeah. county would recommend. Well, but just I mean, in your in, in your deal, we're talking about. It. He just says it'll install the trail located on the airport side of the roadway. It doesn't say anything about it being connected to. So, I mean, I understand what you're saying as far as making it a little easier to widen the road and and put it on there. But I'm looking at it for maintainability, and we as much traffic that goes up and down that road. Why do we want a walking trail adjacent to the asphalt traffic. If I may, I'd love to pose a question. Uh, if you want to come to the podium and tell us who you are. I, fine. Appreciate it. Scott over here. Ryan Gibson, General Counsel for Browning. And so I haven't had a chance to discuss this with Skyler, but we did speak with Ruland Gardner. And I just asked, so under the restrictions and easements agreement that was signed in 2008, 2008 with respect to this sidewalk piece that we're discussing it calls out a concrete a six foot wide concrete sidewalk for that segment so under the agreement between Browning and Northside Creek it calls for a sidewalk not an extension of an asphalt pathway so I'd be interested so, to hear what their response is to that because that's what Browning would push for is a sidewalk not an extension of the asphalt right So, Skyler, question. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the original plan, as my understanding, the original plan was to put it on the Browning Wolf property side because you already have you already have people, employees walking up and down that road. I thought the original one is that's the side it was supposed to go on, so they're not crossing Willow Creek. How did we end up back on the airport side? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think it actually has always been on the airport side. Let me see if I can find it really quick in the original 07. Sorry, I, I can speak to this by... Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Sidewalk design plan. So there, it's called the sidewalk design plan. And, and there, was, there was also a, a security fence so it was on the airport side because there was a, a fence detail that, along with the sidewalk. And actually in the original agreement it says that Browning will perform the snow and ice removal, which is I think what the Browning Northside Creek stands. <coughs> and then I remember that portion of it, and that's why I was thinking it was on the Browning side, too. I know it had a lot to do with your employees and having the desire to have access to it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's part of the design, both our employees as well as the citizens of the area have access to the sidewalk. So there's also been proposals to actually do away with that and put it on the Browning property at both sides of the expense, and we've declined that proposal in lieu of just staying with the agreement. In the initial agreement, the restrictions and easement security, it does draw that sidewalk on the airport side of the Cockwood Canyon Creek. Okay. Uh, Skyler? Yes. You, you brought that up in the original one, how it had the fence um, portion in there. Is that because the fence is going to have to be removed and you'll be putting it back in as part of the road project, or...? Um, I think it was because it was originally in disrepair, um, but it's since that time has been repaired, and I actually am not positive who did the repairs to the fence. And it's, if I remember right, that's, we're just talking about a barbed wire fence here, right? It's a barbed wire fence. I think there was an airport service day where they got out and 
and did some work on that kind of science okay. been a few years ago. Yeah, it's it, it, just a barbed wire, like agricultural. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was thinking. Uh, to accept it. Is there room in the right of way to do curb gutter and sidewalk on that side? On the airport side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, curb, gutter, and sidewalk. Probably if the sidewalk was immediately adjacent to the curb. I don't think we want a mow strip to have to maintain, so. Yeah, I, I mean, when we walked actually this entire road up and down identifying the failure areas, and uh, Brett Heiner was, I don't know if that excited is the right word, but he was, I guess it is, excited that the maintenance of an additional trail would be so easy for, you know, to remove the snow or to maintain it or to chip seal it in so many years. It's just immediately adjacent to the road. So. But was he aware that Browning was going to do the snow removal on it? No, I don't think so. I think he's thinking that if I've got to try and figure out a way to sure. get up on a sidewalk when I don't have that equipment down here, but I don't think he's aware, because he's new, I don't think he's aware of this original agreement with Browning. Yeah, which he wouldn't be because the original agreement is between Northside Creek and Browning, right. which is part of that, there's references to it in the original development agreement, and it's a little bit confusing because Browning is not a party to the development agreement. But there's a separate exhibit or agreement with Browning that Northside Creek put together. So, so there is the, I guess, the convergence of a couple of different parties, um, which we haven't contemplated in the newest agreement. I think the newest agreement contemplated that if it was going to be uh, a publicly accessible trail, that the you know local jurisdiction. Uh, would be maintaining it. So, but if if we want to go back to the original agreement, I guess we can go back to the original agreement. And go back to Member Haslam's, you know, reference to some of the changes. Uh, just briefly, a, a couple of the bullet points. The, the trail is probably the most important. It is the public infrastructure that's going to be installed under the PRUD ordinance, which granted a bonus density of two units. So this property originally has the density or the acreage to allow for 20 units, and a bonus density of two units was granted uh, in consideration for this trail. So. That's where it originates from, um, public improvement in exchange for density under the PRUD ordinance, which... Yes, and that's in the original one here. That's what it says, that you got your bonus density. Bonus density for the trial. Right. Yes. Yeah, and, and we still intend to uh, install the trail and construct it. We've run into a few of the physical constraints, like I've described, but... If there's a different material that the county would like to see, we can explore that possibility. Um, I, I believe it's the best location is actually on the airport side. There are actually uh, power boxes and a few other impediments on the Browning side of the right-of-way that would be even more problematic than some of the narrow strips of land that we have to deal with between the airport fence and the existing roadway. Um, but if it was a curb gutter sidewalk or even some type of a rolled um, apron to move water and then a sidewalk, something like that is could be possible, yeah. I, I would rather see us do something like that and then I would also like us to revert at least a portion back to the original one where we do have that reference to this agreement with Browning so that we have a record of those things as part of this approval. I know that that was discussed. I actually am at a loss because I thought we had voted on this and all that was done and it was all filed. And we were, when this came back up and, and Roland says, you know, that never got 
recorded. And I said, no, I don't. I've been through this battle once. I don't want to do it again. Yeah, it was yeah. way back in, in 07, we found the transmittal from us to Sherry Christensen. That's how far back it goes. Mm -hmm. With the development agreement, the CCNRs and the plat, we found that transmittal. The CCNRs and the plat recorded, but the development agreement has... Got we, MIA, and we've discussed this development agreement since then, early on, probably eleven or twelve. We well, there were yeah, some changes or something. In 2015, we actually came back and we made a submittal for our lakes and a submittal for our subdivision, okay, two is that, separate. Is that and we received that approvals continue? on both of those, and at that time, everybody was under the assumption, I guess you could say, that the development agreement was actually recorded. Absolutely. So. So, and those are the two approvals. We have been under construction continuously on that lake and that subdivision since that, it was December of 2015. We started shortly thereafter exporting material and we've been under construction since then. It's been a large project that has been supervised very closely by the state of Utah State Dam Safety. So it has been a long process for us. Um, but we are nearing completion of the of the reservoir probably a month away from our final sign-off on that and to accommodate the orientation towards views and some better lot lines we wanted to shift and rotate the lot lines uh, not change the uh, densities or, or any of the other considerations in the original agreement stick with the 22 lots in exchange for the trail um, but Lance had recommended he, when Lance started digging into it he found that there was no recorded development agreement even after much searching. So he's recommending that we either, I don't know if amendment's the right word, but memorialize something, and then you'll be seeing a separate application for a plat amendment to just rotate our lot lines on, a, on an angle to capture some views better. So that lot line adjustment is actually what precipitated all of this. Let's get all of the cards on the table, let's document everything that we knew in the beginning, we know that needs to be completed um, in one new document so that everybody's on the same page, which we agree with, we appreciate that. So, I mean, there's one thing that we, as identified as a reconstruction item, is that roundabout. That roundabout was installed, but actually removed by the county public works department um, after the complaint of some uh, ranchers, I guess, that were going up Cottonwood Canyon couldn't make the turn. Um, but in the new development agreement, we're proposing that we actually just go in and make all of those repairs and just pave it over as though it's just a through road instead of reinstalling any type of paper in a roundabout. Or... So I'm moving on to a couple of different items. Is there any other items in the development agreement that we could flush out the so let me just go back to the 5.2. So it had spoken about an asphalt trail slash bike path. We can modify it to say a six foot wide concrete sidewalk located on the airport side of such roadway. And, and if we could, I would like to uh, reference the, the, the agreement with Browning on, so that it references the maintenance that will be taken care of by Browning. Yeah, so I know there's an agreement between Browning and Northside Creek. Was there ever an agreement between Browning and the county? Well, I wasn't here on the original discussion. I just remember we had that in front of us, or that development agreement in front of us, when we did all the stuff in 2015. And uh, all of that was discussed about how this is all going to be taken care of, and all that was done, but I don't think there's, I don't know of any, but at that, that 2015 there was not a discussion of it between the county and Browning, it was Browning and Northside Creek. So where does it talk about the fencing along the airport? That's in the original. That's, yeah. That's I know, that's, that's what I'm asking, where's it at in this one? Because I found part, part of my problem is I actually have the Browning one between you guys and Browning, and that's where I was getting confused. So I need to move Browning out of the way and not just compare back and forth, and that's one of the things. So so on the density, it's a density granted in exchange for airport fence and trail. 
Um, but then in yours, it gets talking about, um, oh, where did, where did my density go again? Yeah, bonus density has been granted in exchange for reconstruction of the roundabout previously removed by the county, resurfacing and widening Cottonwood Canyon Road as more specifically set forth in this agreement. So originally you were putting up a fence along the airport and the that trail. The trail right? And the trail. So that's what I'm asking. Where is the fence in this new one? Oh, the, the fence is not in the new one. Because as we were doing our walkthrough, we had, in reviewing the fence, we didn't find any... It's not. It's no longer in disrepair. So the original... No... The original one was to repair or replace or install new fence, but that's actually all been done. So instead of that, our proposal to the county was to um, redo the roundabout, which was removed by the Public Works Department. But all you're going to do is just resur regrade and sur resurface that? Yeah, over exit, compact yeah. it, yes, to asphalt standards. Yes. So we don't have a concrete circle in the middle of it correct okay no but yeah i think our right-of-way permit probably showed a three over eight for the road base mm -hmm. eight inch so i think i believe that's the county standard so in the agreement between browning and northside creek is it is it just browning ink is there a comma no it's actually now that i look at it it's uh branding arms company Two distinct entities, Browning and Browning Arms Company. Browning Arms Company is the party. And what's that dated? October 15, 2008. So we could add into that section, assuming you guys are amenable as well. The sidewalk along Cottonwood Canyon Road shall be maintained by Browning Arms Company pursuant to a separate agreement between developer and Browning Arms Company dated October 15th, 2008. Because I, I would also just note, I mean, because the Browning Northside Creek uh, the, uh, restrictions and easements agreement deals with fencing obligations. You know, there's four separate sections of fencing, including this airport fence that we're discussing. But it also includes a road widening specific to Browning of putting in a left turn lane to pull into Browning's main entrance. So that's addressed as well in this agreement. So in the Browning one. In the Browning agreement. It's north side, north side Creek's Correct. responsibility to put in that. Is there sufficient right of way to do that as well? So are we expanding the right of way on the Browning side? That wasn't the plan. That's not how the agreement's written up. I, I don't know where the, the easement ends. I don't, we can take a detailed look at the, I don't think it's physically wide enough. We've looked at it. We made presentations to Craig and Travis and both, neither of them. I don't know that they rejected it, but we're, in, we're no longer interested in that term. Well, that's, that's not my understanding. Okay. So I, I wasn't around back then, but as we've met with Rulin Gardner within the last few months, that was certainly addressed. Or, or we took the position that we, we intend to enforce the agreement as written in 2008. So we haven't agreed to do away with the turn lane, and we certainly haven't agreed to do away with the concrete sidewalk. I guess that will be up to the county to determine if a turn, if there's sufficient right of width to accommodate a turn lane. And I, I, from our investigation, I'm not sure that there is. Can you, can you scroll? The asphalt Down. is only 22 feet wide, and to accommodate a turn lane, you'd have to be at least 34 feet wide okay. asphalt. So, well, I, I can only assume that the part of the that we entered the agreement in 2008, <laughs> you know, we drew up the very specific and detailed exhibit showing the concrete pathway and the left turn lane. Right? And, and so, the, the left turn lane would actually be at the next entrance. The, next stroll, at, yeah, the main entrance. entrance. Right there. Which you can actually see, this is so, vegetation, and this is some gravel right here. The fence is basically right on the line between the vegetation and the gravel. But 
on the exhibits of the agreement, I mean, it does show where this road is is widened significantly at this point, comes out, and then back in. Is it papered back in? Yeah, and I think the, the complication lane. is, as you can see on this aerial, the, the majority of the right-of-way is on the browning side of the center line. So that road is actually on the so really shifted to the so east. we could why you just have to take out some of your trees mr chair yeah well i don't yeah. know how to take but it's <laughs> yeah. we, we would certainly be reasonable in finding a solution to, to make it work because because we have an interest in you know public safety putting in that turn lane that road gets busier and busier yeah okay so my question <coughs> is to you i guess then i guess dan donald jan painted listen or not um at what point does our approval of this development agreement with Northside Creek come into effect with Browning, with with the agreement that they have? Because that's what I was reading too, is the left turn lane, but it's not in yours with the county. Right. Okay, and so at what point does the county, I don't know if we want to take liability or if we want to pursue this I'm, I'm not sure where to address that or how to tie it into their development agreement well i have definitely have an opinion on this issue i don't know that i should address it maybe jan should i i i'm at oh i hear voice okay we can hear you i'm happy um the way i'm looking at it there may be some site agreements with browning between the developer and browning but I feel like the development agreement, as amended and as proposed, is a standalone loan document. And so when Browning has not reached out, at least to me, to tell me they have a problem with assigning this, I guess if they're saying that, then we could take a little more time to look at it. But I had, that had not been an issue till tonight that I had seen. So I, I don't know that we need to worry too much about Browning and their position right now. So is is that the right of way? Like, can you tell me your name again? I'm sorry. Ryan Gibson, J I D S O N. It's nice to meet you. And again, we, we fully acknowledge that we're not a member of the development agreement, and and we we communicated with Lance here just to give him a heads up that hey, this agreement exists between the developer and Browning, and keep that in mind as you're making decisions here with respect to approval of the development agreement. That the developer still has to comply with the agreement with Browning as well. So, although we're not a member of the development agreement or a party, we still have to, I think it would be in everyone's best interest to, to make sure this development agreement is consistent with the Browning and Northside Creek development, so we're not trying to enforce something that conflicts with what the county wants to do. But, that, but that's, that's my question, is at what point does the county step in, or can we step in and say, we need to acknowledge the Browning development agreement you stepped into it in theirs. when the county council conditioned approval of the Northside Creek subdivision on them doing an agreement with Browning. Okay. <laughs> it was a mistake from my perspective. Personally, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to. to okay, well, no, that, that's what I'm asking because I don't want to sit here and, and say, okay, we're going to enforce this contract, but we have no right to do that. That's my. Yeah, and from my perspective, speaking generally with respect to all matters for approval, <laughs> then you, you don't delegate your legislative authority to the neighbors. And that's, from my perspective, what happened in this context. But let's try to get it resolved. So, because <laughs> we want yeah, to, the county wants the road improved, <clears throat> they want the sidewalk, they want the trail, whatever, you want that done. And, and I don't know, do you, is that line accurate? Maybe or maybe not. Okay. So we might need to go back and determine what the exact right of way width is, what improvements, meaning landscaping and fencing that you guys may have are within or with outside of the right of way, and then make a decision as to whether or not we want to include the left-hand turn lane. And I don't know if you guys have done a traffic study to see if a left-hand turn lane would be warranted by a traffic study. I. I mean, I know you guys load in in the morning, and how many cars do you think you park there a day? 75? No, there's probably 110-ish. 110. 110. 
I mean, I'd be interested to know if the, a traffic study would warrant a left-hand turn lane in there. But if it does, it does. And even if it doesn't, if it's your, in, in your agreement and there's right-of-way width, then it seems to me we can get it done and accommodate it, it, it if there's right-of-way width. We can, and, and, and it would be my belief that that would occur outside of this development agreement, that we would actually work with Browning in order to fulfill the obligation of that agreement. We would submit a separate application, a right-of-way permit, to uh, detail and formalize that left-hand turn lane if it can be accommodated. The, the only problem with that, Skyder, is that this agreement is saying we're going to improve the widening of the road pursuant to plans and specs approved in the context of this agreement. So we need to have that answer in order to know what to do, the county needs to do, in order to make sure the county's interests are protected. Right, and I thought those plans and specs were actually our right-of-way permit for the trail. So should they be expanded to include investigating through a traffic study a left-hand turn lane? Or if there's just room for it, putting it in. Or if there's physically enough room. Yes. Yeah. If, if there's room in well, the so, right-of-way, let's just put it in. <laughs> well, so so part of that question, if there's not, and, and that's why I'm, I'm trying to figure out where to put this, if there's not room, we're going to have a we're going to have a walking trail up there. Is there not, if there's not room, how big of a, and I don't know if we could, how big of an inconvenience would it be to widen towards the airport? Widen the right of way, you say? Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Let's see, that's what I'm thinking. To me, it needs to be, if we're going to allow this, that needs to be in this development agreement, yeah, we that we're going to allow you to do we that. We have this documentation. We've flown it with an aerial drone. We've outlined the right of way. And we were not physically able to fit because of the using that airport fence as the basically the line of demarcation. There's a few areas where it's only about eight feet wide between the edge of asphalt existing and that airport fence. So to accommodate a full turn lane on the airport side of the right of way it is it's not achievable. But we have a lot of that documentation already with them. That's the documentation that I mentioned that was submitted to Browning. And then we made a proposal to move it to the Browning side, and then they rejected that proposal. So we have the information and can document it, the physical characteristics of the width, and if needed, even employ a traffic study to determine if, if that's the best use of the right-of-way width. The other consideration might be is if if there's enough physical width for the uh, left-hand turn lane, I'm not sure that, that there would be any right-of-way remaining for the trail. So, so it sounds through that narrow section. Are we going to be able to res resolve this tonight without knowing that? <clears throat> I so don't think so. Not but but let's, if there's other comments from the council on the agreement, let's get those. And then this was noticed for a public hearing. No one's signed it to, to participate in it, but we're, we should open it up for public hearing. Okay. So are there other comments from the council on yeah, the form so, of the agreement? So I'm interested in approving this tonight and letting Gardner Development move forward with their plans. If we can put something in here that just references, and, and it's not that I want to police and um, control this agreement that they have, but a lot of the decisions that were made in this original development agreement were based on that agreement that they had. And so the, the county is just saying at the time, and, and to put it into context, um, at the time this was done, Browning was the largest employer in the county, or real close to it, the, the, the largest private employer. And because of the type of business that they had, there's a big concern about protecting Browning from encroachment from the masses, for lack of a better term. And this agreement that they had, and the separate agreement that they had with Northside was an effort to help protect there, but also with the, the turn lane and the uh, trail, it was to provide something for the public as well as the Browning employees. And I think that the council at the time put a lot of their decision-making into what's listed in that agreement. And that's why 
you know, the fact that Browning's going to keep the snow off of the sidewalk and all that, so it's not a constant battle back on the county. We reference that we're approving this based on the fact that there is this agreement and that that's how things will be maintained. Um, maybe that was an error on their part and they should have incorporated it into the development agreement discussion and, and had it as an actual uh, written in portion of the development agreement, but regardless, I think we need to do our best to honor what that original agreement was. And, and, and that way it's spelled out for future generations so there's not a lot of confusion as to how things are going to be taken care of. Can, can I just make one point of clarification? <clears throat> if you turn to Lance's packet, page 30 of 43, so this is the original development agreement, paragraph 5.4. I just want to make sure that I didn't misspeak. It actually says that this sidewalk, that it doesn't refer to it as a trail, the sidewalk shall be dedicated to the county, and the county will maintain the sidewalk and fencing, except that Browning will perform the snow and ice removal for the sidewalk. Yes, and, and it was the snow and ice removal that I was referring to. Okay. On there. I just wasn't sure if I had said that Browning was responsible for everything. They're not, oh, so okay. improvements are actually the county. Yeah. Snow and ice removal. If we've got to ground. replace concrete. I think that's on the county, but it was the snow and ice removal that I was that I remember. And again, that's been a lot of years ago. But I remember snow and ice was the discussion we talked about. And so, yeah. that's the, that's consistent with the agreement from Browning the developer. Only it just mentions snow removal okay. on what they refer to as the Silverstone sidewalk. <clears throat> okay, so we're taking asphalt out of there too, because that gives you the concrete or it's asphalt. On page 30, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's the old so, one. That's the old this is the old one. Sorry, I was just making reference to the original yeah, one so, and what, so the potential, who had what obligation in the original one. Yeah, the potential okay. amendment that I've asked for that Robert's recorded is to say concrete. Okay. Now I go back up to the new. So what I, this additional sentence says right now is snow removal on the sidewalk along Cottonwood Canyon Road should be maintained by Browning Arms Company pursuant to a separate agreement between developer and Browning Arms Company dated October 15th, 2008. It, it would be better for the county to have a direct agreement with Browning's arm company. Can you put that in? 5.2. 5.2. I don't disagree with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with the changes that you suggested there. And I agree with Member Kilmer. I'd, I'd like to get this sorted out if we can this evening. Yeah, the only thing I'm concerned about is the the width of the right-of-way and whether it will accommodate the sidewalk, which I would pri to prioritize over a left turn lane with all due respect to Browning. But uh, in terms uh, of if there's room concern. for both, then uh, put it I, in. I don't know how we determine if there's room for both during this meeting. That's the concern. Yeah, that's the and that if I'm we're sure going we to hold both. either in the interest of, of Browning, and the developer at this point, I don't know how how to address this problem without knowing which side of the road it's going to come on. Because if if we're going to approve this based on that turn lane going in, is that is Browning going to be amenable to it coming off the Browning side if that's where it has to go? If there isn't enough easement in on the county side? No, and certainly not tonight. You know, we're not going right. to agree to do away with the turn lane because you know my position on this, and I can bring the big maps with the exhibit so we can see the detail. But this was all drawn out in 2008. And there obviously wasn't a concern in 2008 that there wasn't enough room in the right of way to have the left turn lane as well as the concrete sidewalk. So you don't think in the agreement in 2008, you feel like it was there, there was room on the Mor in the Morgan County easement to, put, to widen the road to accommodate a turn lane without it going into the Browning easement? I have to assume so. And, and we can look at that, and, and I'm happy to look at that with the developer outside of this meeting as we look at those at those plans again that have the distances that have the measurements it's very detailed you know it's not a hand-drawn trail with it's, it's very detailed it's professionally done um, you know I can show you a reduced down copy you just can't read it but by you know en enzyme engineers that put that together and I, and I don't doubt that I I just 
that that's my only concern at this point is I think we've reached an agreement where both the the, the trail whether it be concrete or asphalt and the turn lane would go there ideally for both for all parties involved the only issue that I think we still have is whether or not the county has the right-of-way width in order to accommodate both. Yeah, Ryan, do you know if on the plan it shows the right-of-way? Or is it just... Run the map, to be honest, but you know, the, drawing, the drawings might have shown an improvement <laughs> without paying attention to the right-of-way. You know, unfortunately on the reduced-down version of it, it's hard to see. You can't read the detail. Like, <laughs> I can't decipher exactly what it's saying here. So is it possible in this agreement to, to if, it is, if it is available, if the width is available on the county side, of course it will go on the county side, but if it is not available on the, on the county side, what's the next step? Going into to Browning without their permission at this point? I, no, well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You may very well have Browning's permission. You know, from a standpoint of if our priorities, let's make it sure that term like yeah. is put in. And, and that you know, may be very, very well be able to leave it, but was. Uh, yeah, that's and that's my question. If there isn't a concern, if Browning is willing to, because of course I I think what's going to come out of the county side first. But if it isn't there, if Browning is not going to have a problem with it coming out of the Browning side of the easement, then I think it's it's not an issue anymore. Yeah. And all I can say is I can't represent that that take that position tonight without having actually looked at it. And and so that's to so that's my concern. I don't know that we can come to a we can resolve it without knowing for sure where the where the width of Because you have some fence and trees along that right. boundary there. I, I'd recommend we go into public hearing and hear what else is to be said, and then we can review okay. this. Is that a motion? Sure. I'll second the motion. Motion and a second <laughs> to go in public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one signed the list, but you indicated you wanted to speak to this matter. My name is Monty Byram, and uh, my family owns a property on the north side of the North Creek development. And we've got a couple of concerns I, I want to bring up. First is the, the Cottonwood Bridge. So, uh, Lance, could you go to the top of the map where the Cottonwood Bridge is on the old dirt road that goes up the canyon? Oh, yeah, right there. That's great. So, what's happening right now? This coming from up there, and, and the, the developers moving the road is corresponding with this road right here. Or maybe even a little, they moved it right over next to the creek. And it's coming across like this, and it, currently we don't have the room to, to make a turn with the semi truck, the stock trailer, to get across the bridge. Same problem we had on the aforementioned roundabout down by Browns, and uh, we've been trucking. Livestock well, across there for 75 years, we need to be able to have it at least as good as what it was or better. And uh, so we're concerned about being able to make that turn. We've been in contact with the developer, Ruling, and he's assured us he's going to make it work, but looking at it tonight has brought up my concerns, so we said I'd better come up and bring that point up. And another concern is we have wildland fires, the county's had to take a, a bulldozer up there before. There's a, a crossing right there for heavy equipment. It's too heavy for the bridge. We need access to both of these with semi-trailers because sometimes there's construction of uh, tractors and track loads being taken up here, bulldozers or whatever. We need to be able to have that crossing there. So we're concerned about being able to make that turn. And I wanted to get that on the, the public comments here. Second concern, the inlet structure for the reservoir has been placed right on the edge of this wing wall for the bridge. The bridge is a, a rectangular concrete structure. Well, it's got concrete on the bottom. It's got concrete walls and the wing walls here. And in the past, when we've had flood events, the water has come up and come over the side of the bridge right there and ran right down the road. In fact, as far as down in Brownings, you know, on the north side of Brownings, you got that big berm that goes from the Cottonwood Road all the way down almost to the creek, the funnel water, right where that was put up there. What our concern is, the wing wall from that uh, 
in that structure is occluding 40% of the capacity of the bridge right now. And we're really concerned that that bridge is going to get washed out and we have a rain, rain on snow event that causes pretty heavy flooding. And we'd like the county engineer to take a look at that and offer his opinion. Uh, I don't want to throw a big complaint without some kind of a resolution. I think that a better place for that inlet structure would be up here on one of these bends of the creek, which would allow them to take the water direct, direct into it and also have the room for, for uh, the capacity so something got filled up here and just go around, but the bridge would still have its original capacity. Okay. Anything else? All right. Oh, just one other thing. My family would probably be in favor. I brought it up to them, and, and nobody said they wouldn't do it. But so this would be the property line right there. If, if the developer needed to go in here to do his inlet structure, we'd probably give him an easement to do that. So that's your property boundary right there. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're. We're willing to discuss that with the developer. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't sign up, but not the last one. Tina Kelly. Robert Kilmer has probably been, has been in office longer than I have, was in office. But I've been involved with this project longer than any of you. The only other person in this room that had more association with this project long time is Debbie Session. So I was the citizen making the noise at the back of the room early on about the rights of the property owners adjacent to it, water, every issue that has come up. I was the, I was the person at the back of the room. And uh, I don't see how this is going to work, and why are you giving them more density than, than is allowed by that zone? And they went to the PREB process. That's all, that's all water under the bridge. But part of the public comment at the time came from Browning. They were an existing business. They did not want to be infringed upon. They did not want to lose their lives. They did not want traffic to start causing problems as this built out. So the county looked at that. I was on the citizen side, and then I was on the council side as these came forward. We wanted to respect Browning's property and the citizen's property, as well as the, the developer, and ask them to come to some kind of agreement. Now, I understand that that agreement is outside of the development agreement, but if we held the development agreement up, and don't hold me to this in court, Father, this is all recollection, but we would not move forward with the development agreement until there's some more assurances in place. And so with all due respect, I would hope that whatever changes you make to this development agreement as it's moving forward, that you respect the interests of the citizens and the council that were there when this agreement was put into place. But that's really what I'm asking, that you don't just, it's not just something that it's water under the bridge as this goes by because there wasn't enough room. Because if the documents show that there was, I think we should move forward. I understand it's a private issue between Browning and the developer on that agreement. But if the county can facilitate that, I think they should. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Is there anyone else who wants to speak as part of the public hearing on this matter? Is there a motion to go out of public hearing? So moved. <laughs> so seconded. <laughs> okay. We're going to go with Newton as the motion and Kilmer as the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Okay, so I have another question. On these maps that we've got in our packet, on Exhibit C, can you go cruise to that? Lance. The existing zoning map? Oh, no, it did, yeah, existing zoning map, Exhibit C. 
that's in our packet. So, so my question is in that um, I don't know if you want to call it the northeast corner. You got the property line. I don't know the the blue line is that the that is the Cottonwoods development, correct? Correct. And then we got the Northside Creek development, but yet we're overlapping those that corner. How come? If if the blue line is the Cottonwood Development Agreement, why do we have Northside Creek coming over that boundary line? Anyone? Is that a boundary line or the blue? Well, I'm, I'm assuming the blue is the Cottonwood Creek PRUD. I thought the red was their PRUD. Hey, the yeah, red line is the Northside North Side Creek, Creek Development Agreement PRUD. Okay. The blue line is the Cottonwoods PRUD. PRUD, thank you. So they do overlap. Yeah, that's my question. Why are we overlapping? Because two of those lots it shows should be in the cottonwoods. I guess ultimately it depends on where they're recorded at, right? I actually don't know why those are overlapping, to tell you the truth. Um, but this, this, this is the original flat lot lines. And, the, and this area right here is already recorded as a parcel within the Northside Creek. So who is... So who is Forge Green? Forge Associate Green is the engineering firm that would have done the original Northside Creek flat and the Cottonwoods original stuff, actually. Okay, because that doesn't match the the map that I have. It oh, shows. So it shows. That's, that's the original plot. The plot's been amended, right? Uh, it was amended in 2015. Yeah, I well, remember even, that amendment. But what, but what I'm saying is even. Even then, it showed Northside Creek going like it is right now. I'm just—I don't know why they did that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out why we've got overlapping the two PRUDs. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, because it isn't—is—is is it? It's my understanding that that phase of the development is now back to Wilkinson's? That property, is that back to Wilkinson's? When, when you say that property, not this. Phase six. This area here? Yeah. What's phase six of the Cottonwoods and Mountain Green is owned by the Wilkinson's and other third parties, yes. Okay, and so, that, so that's my question is, that's owned by them, but now we're saying Northside Creek is taking the corner out. What's overlapping is the development agreements are overlapping. The property boundaries, the ownership is correct. And I don't think any of the concept plans for the Cottonwoods have any lots in that, let's call it the red-blue overlap. I, the, to my knowledge, there's no lots in the Cottonwoods and Mountain Green Development Agreement within that red-blue overlap that I know of. The equestrian center is there. Oh, the equestrian center. So is up in that corner. Yep. Okay, so so that that's my question. If that's is that the property, is that the boundary line? No. The development agreements in their concept plans and the area that they discussed in both of them both use that same property. I don't know how that was approved, but <laughs> well, that's my but ownership itself is not overlapping is here. Correct. This is the ownership is not overlapping. And that portion of the okay, so if we're doing a new development agreement or trying to get one approved, why would we introduce that? Why would we entertain that overlap again? Because this property owner is owns that property, and they have an approved recorded subdivision. Yeah, and they have a 
the subdivision yeah. plat there. To my knowledge, nothing's been brought in an application on what is phase six of the cottonwoods. But it's property owned by Northside Creek LLC. So if we want to vacate that, you're suggesting that we should vacate it and as it relates to the Cottonwoods Development Agreement? And in my mind, it's already been done because it's already been recorded as a Northside Creek subdivision. That was recorded in 09. I don't know how I... The equestrian center is located there? Yeah. Well, in the concept plan, yes. In, in the concept plan, sure. We are going to have a lot of development agreements coming in for amendments. They were done 10 years ago. Things have shifted and changed. And uh, this is one issue that was brought to my attention. And I, I don't know what we're going to do with the Cosmics Development Agreement. I think it needs to be amended to reflect what's been approved. But that's still a process we need to go through. Should we submit a paragraph in the Northside Creek Development Agreement which describes this overlap and that? I guess just outline that it's already been recorded as part of the original Northside Creek PRUD. And this property will no longer be applicable to the Cottonwoods of Mountain Green PUD. Something like that. Mr. Chair? Yes. I think these are all good ideas we're talking about, but it's definitely getting to a point where I would suggest not rushing a decision tonight or uh, we may need our engineer to way back in on some items, and it, and your decision tonight could affect another development uh, agreement that was not on radar. And so, as much as you'd like to get it done tonight, I would suggest maybe we get a little more prepared to bring it back to another council meeting. How do you feel about that, Skyler? Uh, that's acceptable. I, I, I would hope, is there any other items that you have questions on? I know this council commission, I'm not sure what you're on. <laughs> this council goes away and the commission you comes all, back. You're all gone, <laughs> and you're we're kind of going to have to redo commission. this again come January, and, February. And, and that was it. my thing, is having been mm -hmm. here and had so many things carried over that was so hard to figure out what, some of these things, if we can clean them up and get them taken care of so that the new commission can deal with trying to figure out how to run under the new rules and all that kind of stuff. If you've got a whole bunch more of these coming, any of these we can get taken care of. Uh, it's just out of concern knowing what it's like trying to come in cold and figure out where these things are all at. Yeah, I agree. But I also understand... I mean, we've got to do it right. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I just don't know how you concerned. can make a decision. Are there are there other issues on this development agreement? Because when they come back, it would be nice to have them address no, everything I, that, that at least this council has concerns about. Um, and I think we can, at that time, figure out the road width to see if we if there's room to accommodate the term. And I just think we put it in if there's a room. I don't think we no, address I, in the development agreement that north end that was discussed um, but maybe there needs to be some discussion on that and how to deal with that does that fall into the development agreement where the road goes north is that part of is that discussed in it at all that's my que that would be my next question is i don't know that i disagree with the concerns expressed on on the turn on the road i just don't know if it can be addressed in this Agreement. So my question on that is, at what point does the county's ownership of the road end? I don't know. How far? Because that that, that would determine where it, we can. It, it, it ends at the about. roundabout at the so south end. So it's all private it. property within the red area. There. So the area that uh, this gentleman was referring to about the bridge, the bridge is not county. No, no, it's not. Okay. It's all private property. But we, we are realigning that road, and we've actually received a, um, a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers, I can't think of the name of it, it an excavation permit to actually go into that creek and better define the creek on the northeast side of that. Uh, we do understand that that's a pinch point. We've actually secured a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers in the state of Utah to actually go in there and 
excavate some of that rock out there on our side of the property. And concerning the point of diversion, that, that's, that point of diversion where we're intaking water for this project, that was approved by the state of Utah uh, Division of Natural Resources under water rights. So it's actually been approved for quite a while. This, this is true, just to... But we've had this problem on another creek, and that you can't go out. That's who has the jurisdiction over it. So the negotiation for where the intake would change has to go through DNR for approval. Not the county doesn't have jurisdiction on it. Yeah, and all of those items are a part. Well, not all of those items. The intake structure is a part of our lake drawings, and that is reviewed by the state dam engineer, and they have signed off on it. Does it address the issue at the bridge? The bridge and the turning radius, no. But that, that is something that we can work with on the, there are several up canyon private property owners. Um, and we can work on a radius that works for their needed access. That's not a problem. There, there is an easement, so that roadway has an easement on it um, that allows us to relocate it to accommodate our development here and we're just relocating a portion of that road, but if we need to meet with them to accommodate better turn radiuses, that's not a problem. And but is that addressed, to go to, go to Member Cannon's question, it's probably not in the development agreement, but once we memorialize the development agreement, I will be coming back with a plat amendment, and that plat will show the easement access going up Canyon. So it could be something that's reviewed with the plat amendment. So, so Skyler, you heard the the concerns expressed. Well, I know that the county doesn't oversee that. Do you have, are you aware of those issues? Would you agree with the property owner who's expressed those concerns on the safety of the intake there? And Oh, uh, yes. That, that is why we've actually secured that new permit just within the last 10 days from the state of Utah and Army Corps of Engineers to modify and build an embankment on that area to create where it will impound against that dam. We didn't want it to spill over the banks and come into our subdivision. So we're actually going to be building up a little bit of a berm or embankment there out onto our property to accommodate a larger, I think they call it a stilling basin, so the energy can be dissipated and uh, water can pool there before it actually goes underneath that bridge. So. Okay, so while, while we don't have jurisdiction over it, you are aware of the concern and it can be worked out in sure. a different format. Yeah, right. sounds like you should share those, that concept and drawings with Mr. Byram so yeah, that he yeah. understands that you're addressing that issue. Yeah. And then can you define minor changes? Lance can't. Nobody, <laughs> wanted to, nobody wanted to do that one. Well, that that's part of it. That's part of my concern on, on part of this is... I think we, didn't we borrow language from the most recent development agreement approved? Um, yes, well, I, yes, we use the uh, same language, well, is it the same language? I believe we use the same language that was in the Osage Peaks development agreement. Yes. So can we put that in here? I just, I would just like something identified that's what we mean we we pulled the exact language out of there you're talking about section 6.5 yes so we, we there was concern raised by the staff with respect to language that was there and so we went back to the development agreement approved in for Wasatch Peaks and just pulled over that language from there so so minor changes in our ordinance defined in our ordinance Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone this item until Just Skyler, so when's a good time for you to come back? Would you like the first meeting in January or would you like it further out? Uh, would that be the fifth? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would be fine. We have quite a bit of this information concerning the right-of-way at Browning. Okay. 
the overlap between cottonwoods and Hillside Creek, I'll have to look into that a little bit further. But. Okay. So I'd like to postpone until the January 5th meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Member Newton, seconded by Member Cannon to postpone this item till the January 5th, 2021 meeting of the County Commission. 2021. 21. That's the first time I've really heard that out loud. <laughs> well, I think we're all anxious to get there. <laughs> okay. Any questions on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. So bad for you guys. How can you guys Thank give you. him crap for saying nay? Because he never says nay. Gosh. <laughs> I yeah, didn't hear one from you, so I heard Do you so want to change your vote, in. Roland? I know. Do you want to change yours to me? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, that item number two was postponed. Item number three, member canon discussion, county council direction regarding the 2021 county membership and annual dues for the American Land Council. Well, I think we just illustrated in that one why, why I brought this forward. It, it's in my portfolio assignment, and but before I go ahead and approve, I think it's it's in our budget. We've paid it every year, and I don't want to push off to the new council something that they wouldn't know or understand, but I didn't want to approve it without running it past this council to make sure that that was the direction they wanted to go. So my question is, do we want to continue that? While we do not have a, a large percentage of public lands within our county, we do get, we are impacted in the way the, the um, state government is funded through public lands and how these other rural counties are impacted. So we've done it, we've shown support over the last six years by being part of American Lands Council. I don't see any of those issues behind it changing, but before I put this through for payment, I wanted to make sure I was not alone in that. So I've always um, thought this was very important that we participate in this. Um, the more and more people who move into the county, the more and more need access to those public lands. And we don't provide it in our own county because it's all private. If we don't support the other counties maintaining that, those open public lands, we're going to lose it there too, and I just think it's important that we support that for our for our residents because that's where they can recreate, and that's that's the only access they have. So, Re remind me, Tina, where do we pay this from? <laughs> so it's been in um, the un no. no. yeah. memberships and dues. Okay. So yes, that was a motion, and I heard a second. Yeah. Second. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'll fill out the sheet and send it on. We haven't voted, but we have a question. All in favor? Oh, hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> Member <laughs> Kellner. Sorry, I'm moving ahead. Second. This wasn't a discussion. It was not for a decision. It was only marked for a decision. That's my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It, well, we wanted one. to make a decision. Well, okay. Well, but we've <laughs> discussed it. Now <laughs> I know what I should do with it. She wanted direction. Yeah, I think we have a consensus that we want to keep going with that agreement. I will concur. All right. Thank you. What? Still no, me. <laughs> it's oh. got to be coming. You just wow. It's the end of his term. Now he's going to change his ways. Okay. Oh, Thank no. you. <laughs> Item number four, uh, I guess myself and Member Cannon, discussion, decision, community investment board, project list, additions, request from the Morgan County Airport. So the airport board gave us these list of projects. They've also added to the list that's in the packet uh, fencing to surround the airport, they they have concerns about wildlife. They said it's not as bad now that Browning, I should have thanked the attorney before he left, has stopped feeding the deer so they don't come out on the runway quite as, as prolifically as they used to. But this allows the airport to, to apply for and qualify for um, USDA funding when they are on the CIB list. So it extends the opportunity they have for funding sources. So it is more of a, what would be the word for it? It's more of a. It's a tool to, yeah, to it, allow them to yeah, this request is, funding, right? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair, that we 
add the following items to the CIB Community Investment Board project list for the Morgan County Airport. Uh, Short-term projects, fire suppression improvements of 80,000, water and sewer infrastructure additions of 150,000, broadband and fiber installation 150,000, and long-term projects, extension of single parallel taxiway 250,000. Also fencing for 200,000. Oh, okay, that wasn't on the list. Also fencing for 200,000. That was on uh, the long, long 200,000 for fencing. He sent me that on Monday. Oh, hold on, Skylar just said fencing was all done. The existing <laughs> fencing has, no. has been repaired. This would be... They want to upgrade that. that. Well, Bobby yeah, knows be better than upgrade. I do. Okay. A motion by Member Newton, seconded by Member Kilmer, to approve the additions to the Community Investment Board project list for the Morgan County Airport. Any questions on the motion? Yes, would you please include the priority? High, medium, or low on each oh, of those items. They didn't. They didn't they specify didn't that specify. on here. Bobby, what do you, do you know do? what they what they would I list think, them as? I think one and two in the long term would be the priority in terms of airport use. Um, the broadband and fiber might be more important for the community generally if it facilitated internet access in other areas around the airport but they just it's just one of the columns on the list yeah, is got, high uh, medium high low medium. priority so or, and it can I, be any of them it doesn't displace anybody else that's already high medium or low it's just so that it's designated the cog will need to know that when it i would say one and two are the most important for airport operations specifically we thought, when we thought in my discussions with George that the <coughs> internet, the broadband and fiber installation may be part of what the the Forest Service would want in their perm, in a permanent structure there, so that was why that was in there, and that would be more of a high on that side of it. That would be true if they were if they committed to the airport. <laughs> yeah, they, that's still a commitment yet to be forthcoming. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just super critical where you put it because you can move them at any okay. time. Yeah, it's we just so that because they're, they're going to ask. Okay, Cog's going to ask which one do you want to put it in? And since I told none them of the last three are going to be at Cog, it would just if you guys know what to tell yeah. them. I'm supposed to send it over to them after this meeting after we approve it, so it would be nice to know. Well, that would be my understanding of priority when I said. I can, <laughs> and if it's. If you don't mind me going back, I don't even know that the airport board would understand the high, medium, low on it. I, I'd just I go just, with what he recommended. Yeah, I would just dictate here. If it needs to be adjusted the later. The would have been, but they have had far fewer incidents of deer crossing since Browning undertook voluntarily to, to say they're not They're now eating my trees. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you need a coyote. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard about the coyote. <laughs> you know. When I was in Las Vegas in October, right by McCarran International Airport, I went to visit my sister's grave. And as I'm pulling in there, there are two coyotes. I mean, this is like now in the middle of the city now. And they're wandering in, and we looked, went over, visited the grave, came back, and they were on their way out with a duck. Really? Pond, yeah. I'm like, wow. Well, those those uh, domestic ducks are easier to catch. <laughs> I, yes. I couldn't believe that the coyotes were there still. I mean, when I grew up out there, we mm -hmm. saw them all the time. But cause, but I lived out in the sticks. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Did we? We just need to vote. Okay. You got your priority ratings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. See? I was waiting, though. See? Uh, the last item is, I brought it forward at the request of Brett Heiner. It was a discussion decision of the <laughs> approval of an open and lease with the Bank Corp for a 2021 MAC. Gives the specifications of the truck, providing for semi-annual payments of 21 .382 commencing on June 10th, 2021. Didn't we already for how long? this and put it in the budget? 
I yes. think it's, it's in the budget. It's in the budget. It's just the agreement. It's just a specific contract agreement to approve. For how many years? Ironically, I was discussing uh, this with the minister, it's building on burn. The schedule. I think it's a five year lease. <laughs> I think it is five years. Um, the question becomes <laughs> we, we had an issue where we need this truck sooner rather than later, except for those which we are borrowing. <laughs> but the question becomes one of budget and how it what year it's allocated to because Stacy says when we even if we enter into a contract that the vehicle won't be delivered until 2021 if we enter into the contract in 2020 then it's booked as part of it as a 2020 expenditure even though we won't pay any money till 2021 and we won't get delivery of the product till 2021 we've done this with our ambulances mm -hmm. and our previous fire trucks but then it ends up we have to make budget adjustments to do it, right? Is that am I expressing that correctly? You are. So that is. It's a I hybrid system. <laughs> so that's why I placed the call to the state auditor's office to ask for some guidance, especially given what happened last night. So his advice was to call um, both the independent auditor and Carver Florg and just make sure that they will not issue us a finding on our audit report if what we do is enter only enter into the agreement tonight and that if he can not take possession of the machinery or put it into service until after the first of the year it is going to be that, that won't be an issue it, it won't be or ready be by, then. by then yeah okay. so as long as he does not take possession of or put it into service until after the first of the year if all you're doing is expediting the building of it by signing the contract tonight, you'll be okay, which is what led us into the CARES discussion of whatever you approve tonight has to be here in service and delivered by the end of the year, or you'll be in trouble on the CARES Act money. So you can enter into this contract tonight and sign it as long as he doesn't receive it or put it into service before the end of the year. Okay, that's good. Thanks for getting that clarification because it struck me as unworkable. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. So, so okay. I, I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair, that we approve the um, Bancorp lease for the 2021 Mack dump truck. Second. Any questions on the motion? Yeah, I want to include the amount on that thing. Uh, semi annual payment of 21382.71 commencing June 10th, 2021. So two a year at that amount, so 41 total? That's correct. 42 total. Okay, so there's a motion by Member Newton and seconded by Member Kilmer to approve the open end lease for the, with the bank court for the 2021 truck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. I told you it would come. <laughs> I told you. Okay. Sorry. So with that, let's move back into administrative. an administrative discussion on the CARES Act funding. And okay. Lance, will you stand? So um, I guess you want me to lead that or? Yes, please. Okay. So we, um, let me just give you an update of where we're at. Right now, with everything that we've spent, we actually spent less than we originally anticipated on several items, which was great. It, it meant there was more funds available than we originally thought. So we've totaled everything that we have spent and everything that we know we will spend by the end of the year. Um, and including the amount that we approved earlier this evening for the training for fire and EMS. We now have CARES Act funding available in the amount of $405,826.22. We've included the businesses too. Yep, we've included those so, two businesses that... To, uh, so that's unexpended? So did you just it's, include um, the training for EMS department? Is that what... That I did. I have not included yet the 75000 that... Um, but you did the training. That was my question. Yes. You took the I training did the training. Out. The training is included and the two that? businesses that we've not yet approved but still need to. 
they've been in, included. Let me confirm that. Yeah, there was business 16 and 27 in the amounts of 7,000 each have been included. Yeah, we probably want to discuss those again. Twenty-seven. Is that one? Uh, oh, I don't know because I've got the other stuff in here too. Let me confirm. That's Tina's most updated list of the ones that we have paid. So that's pretty Yeah, this that should be correct because I had compared each business. Yeah, it was forty-three thousand in the last group. Yes. Tell if these were in your spreadsheet, but this is HVAC for the airport. That I don't think okay. is in our spreadsheet. Was it in the original? No. This was okay. Okay. This is do we have an airport? No. I think you're right. We probably do for administrative. I would think so. Don't we have to go out of council meeting? We're done with council meeting, right? Didn't he make a motion to go into administrative? No, because then we're going back into executive session, right? Yeah. Okay, so we need a section for airport, is what yeah. you're telling me. So there's that. Did we lose some of our equipment in the fire? Yeah. Some of our equipment as in... CARES equipment? Not that I know of. No. Of course, of course you did. Not in, unless you're social distancing in a plow, which... If we would have been, we wouldn't have lost as many. We lost components to our TV. And, and our guys. sprayers. Yes. I heard some and of the our entrance, the entrance, the entrance adjuster shot. was like, <laughs> oh, now I get to explain why I have to buy these twice. Um, there, I, if there was, it would be one sprayer. I think what I know about that, 17. one truck. One. Yay. Yes, Is it the one that's on its like last leg? Yes. Please tell me it's that one. Yes. You, not the brand new one. The oldest truck out. Thanks. Uh, right. right. Woohoo! Which one? It's our best truck. Oh. It's not the one on the last uh, leg or anything. Uh, it's the best one. Did right I have right the spray? <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Oh, it's your best truck right now. <laughs> yeah, but everybody else is that they've donated to us are quite a bit better, but. It's fine. I think that's all I have was just Tina's updated list. Okay. Yep. So I just added, we didn't have the airport, the, the HVAC that we had done in the uh, Forest Service building. But that's now been added. Okay. If, if we approve the um, request on the snowcat of 75000 that would give us a remaining amount of $313,648. Uh, sorry, six hundred and eighty four dollars and twenty two cents. That's what's left. What's that? <laughs> Sarah says she'll take the rest. What was that? You need the dollar? Uh before it is sorry. That was that was yeah after the purchase of the, if if we approve that. Oops. So three thirteen plus seventy five. So Stacy and Mike, any purchases made by any of the departments that were supposed to be covered by CARES Act money has that those transfers taken place and everything's done and all the budgets are whole. And That's my understanding. So. We went through all of it, and Stacy gave me a list of everything from Cassell that's been coded to, to CARES and COVID relief, um, which includes, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here for purchases from departments. I mean, we've got uh, so from disinfectant and hand sanitizer. I'm concerned that there's still quite a bit of money there that didn't get transferred. Who is? The sheriff. That for expenses for his department, for cares, that get? cares and windstorm. But he's talking. I mean, for tonight's discussion, it's cares. 
Yeah, and I sent this out to everybody, including the Sheriff's Department, and said, go through this and make sure we have everything that you spent CARES-wise and respond. That was a week and a half ago. So, and it, it couldn't be replacing additionally budgeted items. So Let me see what we got. So these those sure. are new items that he's considered no. or not in this list? No, he's just saying stuff that was CARES Act funds has... has in his budget, Come out of his shows budget. those expenses coming out of his budget without any kind of a... Oh, it, it will still show that, I think, Stacy. right? Yeah. Until you do those transfers so at the very end. Out of his budget and over into that, those but this is everything that's been coded towards it. There's so, so they're on there. They will transfer out, out yeah. after we make that final report with the state. Under Sheriff and Emergency Management, yeah, um, there's... Right now, about a hundred thousand dollars that's been coded to his budget that will come that out come to out. CARES, okay. correct? Okay. Yeah. So, um, somebody asked the question. So, excluding the snowcat, if we exclude that, there's three hundred and eighty-eight thousand six eighty-four twenty-two. If we uh, go ahead with that purchase. The remaining balance would be three thirteen six eighty four twenty two. Three thirteen what again? Six eighty four twenty two. Now we have a couple of proposals, two different uh, internet suppliers to potentially use the the remaining funds. Um, one is from Beehive, which we've already done. We've allocated 300000 They performed on that. In fact, my understanding is they're basically done with that. And you can give us an update, maybe. Yeah, we'll update the... Uh, Cameron, you have to come out. Go ahead. Come yeah, come, come on. Great. And uh, nice to be back. Thanks for the invitation. Um, a little update on that project. Uh, the, the mainline construction that we've undertaken in the Highlands and along Morgan Valley Drive, uh, Peterson to Young Street, will all be complete this week. And we anticipate uh, you know, sending the remainder uh, invoice either Friday or Monday. I was gonna, that's so that you, gonna be that you should have time to process it. I know you had concern with receiving that last half. And if you yeah, and you know, we don't have to have it in our bank account by the end of the year, but I know you have to spend it by the Correct. end of the year. So I wanted to give you enough time to process it. So if you get that invoice into us, we'll get that taken care of. But I need Great. it from you. And you'll still see our trucks in the area. We're doing a few more things while they're here. But uh, that mainline work will be complete this week. So all the low-lying wires are going to be strung up? Yes. Um, the, the, the process, as you've seen those around, you go through this process on the poles where it's not actually, uh, the wire's not supporting its own weight. There's a, we call a strand. There's a steel wire that runs between the poles. And we have to unlash what's there, lash the new fiber, and then relash what we just unlashed. So you see there's some sag and maybe some coils in places. Uh, all of that will be taken up and relashed and, and tightened up. Okay. Because so. right now they're just hanging with zippy ties, it looks like. Uh, it, I don't know for sure if it's zippy ties, but it could be. <laughs> they they uh, look a little anything. more substan substantial to me, but <laughs> uh, you call them what you want to. I think they call them spools or spindles where they, they've wound it up on some places on the poles. So. <laughs> no, I've seen even where they're tightened. Yeah. Yeah, they're working furiously on that, and it should be done this week. So we're happy for that. We're happy we could deliver on that. That was a, that was a special project. And um, uh, so I'm happy to uh, deliver that news. And would you like me to go ahead and talk? Uh, yeah, I think so, if you, if you like to go through. So he sent a proposal out. Uh, it went to all of us, I believe. He did. Right? I have okay. paper copies if you like them. Uh, I'd like them. So about a week ago, we were given another challenge, and that was to look at how we could help spend the remaining CARES money. <laughs> Not quite how it went. Oh, no, no, no. Well, sorry. Wow. Uh, I feel like it if I've mischaracterized that, I apologize. Um, how do we best cover people um, who were in a lockdown? That's I just gave up my last one, okay. except for the one I've got, but I should have brought another one. Um, 
Uh, well, how, would, how can we characterize that? It's uh, how do we have how do we serve us? Oh, look at you, <laughs> well, Upper Willow well, Creek. A, a new challenge. How oh, can we? I, I didn't uh, think that was not. How can we serve more people? Okay. Grand yes, exactly. How can we serve more people by December thirty first? Yes, that's a it's a big challenge, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. you know Christmas is week and Friday and and. Uh, I do see it. What, I'm, what I'd like to, <laughs> how I'd like to characterize this is we, we looked at multiple different projects to serve additional res, residences and businesses within the county. Uh, there's five projects in here. And these are ranked, uh, these projects are, are ranked by our priority, by, by uh, the way that uh, we would like to present these or, or perform these. Um, and there's another, another caveat here. Because time is so short, what we're proposing is that we restructure things a little bit differently than we did last time. Last time the discussion centered around mainline construction versus uh, you know, uh, fiber from the street to the home or, or our drop construction. Uh, this time I think we're going to have to re, we're going to have to get some new buckets. We're going to have to recharacterize this as materials versus labor. Because at, at this point, the council would be purchasing materials uh, that could be delivered, um, and there's some, there's some technicality around delivery, but there, the, the materials would be delivered in this calendar year. The, the materials uh, would then be constructed uh, in next year. There's just, uh, we, we can't do it any other way. Um, and those materials will be delivered uh, to Beehive's uh, storage, uh, facility to our yard and, and inventory and, and store in teleconstruction. So that's that's the way that I think that this works. And if we want to review these projects, the first project that we think is the most attractive is this Upper Willow Creek Road. Uh, this is, um, we have existing conduit. You sure you, sure you didn't pay him? How much did you pay him, Bobby? We have existing conduit in this area, about 4,500 feet of conduit, which will aid, it brings the cost down and it aids in the construction, uh, of, and the timeliness of that construction in that area. Um, as you can see from the chart, we could service an additional 105 residences. And it, all together, it's about almost five miles of fiber that would be installed, and materials for that area are, uh, you know, 86,604. Um, I have given in each of these estimates a, uh, I've also told you what the labor bucket is, so that you can see that Beehive, like we discussed before, has skin in the game. This isn't, uh, this isn't a gimme. A gimme. Um, there is significant cost of labor also bearing to complete these projects. Uh, the second project, which I uh, Cameron, can, before you move on, can I ask you on the Upper Willow Creek Road, one of the issues that we were trying, what we were trying to do, would this include having, would the fiber line now pass the airport and the business park? That is a great question. We're going to talk about the airport in a couple of slides. <laughs> um, we have to come at this from two different angles. We are in a few of the uh, Cottonwoods phases already, and so to get to the Upper Willow Creek Road, we would be coming the other direction. Woods to get there. Now, okay. if we do the airport and the business park, we would be coming from the south to the north um, from this blue area that okay. you see that we've constructed. Okay. So uh, that's a good question. It's very, uh, very observant. Um, well, okay. So I mean, because mine's along the same line as Tina's. So you're saying you have fiber up in the upper Cottonwoods now. Uh, we have fiber in areas of the Cottonwoods development. We don't have fiber in, in this uh, teal area. Uh, okay, I understand that. So, so from the purple to the teal, you have fiber running up through there? Um, we don't. No, it's the other direction. It's going through the upper Cottonwoods. So yeah, Rose Hill's not covered. I think covered. they have it up here, and then they, then they drive it down into there. But where did, how did they get to the teal? How did they get to the upper Cottonwoods? Oh, we come in. How did we get previously. there originally? Um, yes. I don't have my fiber map in front of me, 
but we've done three phases in the cottonwoods now, and, and it comes in around from there. I'm not sure the exact path. They're holding out on us. Well, I don't know this either. Okay. <laughs> You're holding um, out on me, Cameron. So, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, what else to say? So, we have today conduit that is a couple hundred feet from the business park airport. Uh, we would, we'll, we'll review the airport here in a couple of slides, but we would come in that way for the airport uh, from, the, from the lower side, from the south. All right. Um, the next slide is continuing on down Morgan Valley Drive. So you, you, yeah. you skip Young Street to Porterville. That's where he's at right now. That's no, that's where he just started. No, yeah, that's the next one. Sorry. Young, if, we, if we go to Young I Street... I think he did them in a priority, he was saying originally. That my second priority is Young Street to Porterville. Okay. I think that that is a logical extension of what we've done already on Morgan Valley Drive, would be to continue on into Porterville. Uh, we can serve an additional 106 residences. The, uh, those poles require a new Rocky Mountain Power easement, and we have submitted all the easements requests for those poles. So far, they've approved the first 35. I think they do them in lots of 35. That's how we had to submit them. So we anticipate receiving the easement all the way along uh, Morgan Valley Drive into Porterville. Already submitted. We've already incurred those costs to do that. And you don't anticipate they'll give you a hard time on any of those other 35 sections? Um, there are, we believe there are some poles through there that need maintenance or need to be replaced. Unfortunately, you would think the power company would pay for the maintenance or the replacement of their own poles, but okay. because we're making the request, they would push that cost back onto us. And so we have estimated based on our survey, and we had somebody survey every single pole, we've estimated the number of poles that will have to be replaced or maintained. Wow. But other than that, I believe that we will get the easement all the way along in the border bill. Nothing surprises me anymore, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that there is a small stretch in there where we have to go underground, but it's, it's a pretty short distance. Is that where the power line leaves the road and goes down? It's probably following the power. Uh, if, if you see the power line doing that, I think we'll have to do the same. Oh. And there are some regulations about the span or the distance between poles, and I don't remember the exact distance, but they measure the weight on the strand uh, and um, calculate the distance that we can span between poles. And that's probably why it goes underground. And if, if power is doing that, we'd probably have to do the same. Okay. Yeah, it, there's a section there where I know it leaves the road and actually goes away from the residences. Okay. And then later on, I think it splits and comes back up alongside the road to feed okay. the residents that got left behind when the power line went away. Okay. Yeah, and I, I know we've walked this whole line and looked at every pole, and I'm sure that that's in the number. So Is that there by your house? It starts down there at the log home that Bishop's yeah. built. It leaves the road there, and it goes up, comes back up through uh, Carter Lane. Yeah, because that's where the old road used to go. Carter, yeah. And then from Carter Lane, it goes uh, both directions yeah. to feed okay. the church and everything up there. Okay. So, and, and you'll see the pattern here as we go through these. But in order to kind of determine the profitability, we have to look at the number of residences to take rate. And then there's also kind of a ratio between materials and labor here that comes into play. For us, this upper Willow Creek Road and Young Street to Porterville look good. Um, it starts to look a little less good as we go on, and that's why they're in order of priority. But if we go from this Young Street to Porterville stretch and we turn again to the airport and business park, um, there's, we've counted 65 you know, residences slash businesses in this area. Um, the thing that's good about that for us is that our business service, business customers are generally a little better than residential customers. So that's, that makes it a little more profitable. However, there's a lot of labor involved in this, and our engineers have some concerns about construction practices in and around the airport. 
and the type of uh, underground construction that we could do, whether it's trenching, micro trenching, or if we have to bore the whole thing. We're a little bit uncertain about that. But you can see that the labor costs are, are quite a bit higher for this area. And so that makes it, makes it a little less attractive for us. I think if I were to come away tonight with an agreement for the first two, we'd be, we'd be good to go. Um, as we go along, it gets a little more difficult. So on the airport business park section, does that mean that you, in, from the, the blue to the teal, there is an existing line in that section right there? There is. From the blue to the teal, there's an existing line that gets within a couple hundred feet of the teal. So is there fiber in that line, or is it just the conduit? It's just the conduit, or there could be old coaxial line in there that we would remove. See, I thought CenturyLink ran a line up. CenturyLink does out. have some fiber in the area. I'm not sure exactly of their fiber map or where they're at. Are you talking in the highlands? Or in Cottonwoods? Cottonwoods. No, well, Rose yeah, Hill. I thought they ran they all ran the way up line to the Cottonwood Canyon school. Road into that section of Phase 4. Up, up the road we were talking they, about earlier they, to they the got, school. They got it to the elementary school. Whether they went Silverleaf or came around the backside, I don't know, but they did take it to the elementary school. I think they went around up Cottonwood. They might have. And I just never knew. I believe they, they got, they got the contract for the elementary school with UETM to provide services. Yes, they did. Yeah. And and I because I think they served that portion of Phase Four because you guys aren't in the Phase Four. I think you're in Phase Three and One. You know, if I, if I under, understand it correctly. Oh, I've ha I got to ask. Yeah. Oh. So I, I can't keep the phases straight. But. Yeah, in your original proposal, you mentioned you had conduit in phase one. Okay. Right. So yeah. what yeah. My, yeah. Underst area. Yeah. Yeah. my understanding is what they have run through there is completely tapped out as far as being able to provide right. speed. So they have to add, they either have to go back in and... It, you know the the ins and outs better yeah. than I do, but right now they can't offer additional speeds. That that what's happening is that the um, the workers that are going out there are testing it before they mm -hmm. before they make the contract, and they can't get to the speeds. Okay. They can't get to the increased speeds. It's tapped it, out. It's uh, and it's fiber through there. The fiber itself doesn't it's, have a practical limit. It's um, not. If, if it's not fiber, if it's DSL copper, that's very, very likely. Yeah, it's not. Out. It's DSL copper. Yeah, yeah, it's very likely they're all tapped out. Yeah, and even there's not much they can do about that. No, and that yeah. that seems to be the problem. Um, of course, of course, we'd love to serve the business park and the airport. Um, if uh, if the council chose to. Uh, in there another way, you know, we'd be supportive. Um, it's, uh, should we look at Old Highway? This is number four. Old Highway, uh, basically this would be the second half of Enterprise and then all the way into Morgan. So didn't Summer, Summer Ridge, in, in that section of the beautiful peach color, yes. um, Summer Ridge, sub, that's... This is not including the Summer Ridge Homeowners Association yeah, that right. just contracted to, to install on their own, yeah, correct? Right. This so is this starting where they leave off, at right. the Enterprise it, Church, right? That's right. And it, uh, that is correct. So are you, so at that point, that's why it doesn't go along, I guess it does go along Old Highway there. We yeah. basically come in along Old Highway to the edge of that peach colored polygon. So where it goes up through Summer Ridge Road, yeah. are you continuing along Old Highway there, or are you using the line that's going through Summer Ridge? I have to check. You're leaving? Got to feed a baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get I have to work out with you to give you that two on the way. Hmm? Two on the way. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks. Okay. So, you know, we can serve, I mean, this project actually serves the most residences, but it's, uh, if you're looking at, you know, cost per resident, I think we're high on this, and it's, uh, you know, the ratio of materials to labor makes it hard for Beehive to perform that particular project. 
can do we need to because that's what I was thinking um, council would it Cameron I hate to do this but with Sarah having to leave and her expertise in um, human resources would it be okay for us to move to that agenda sure. item before she has to go Our closed session sorry cool. Uh, yeah. okay. I apologize. Sorry. So we'll need to do a motion to go into closed session. Uh, I move to go into a closed session to discuss competency of an individual and potential litigation or pending litigation. I second. Thank you. What's the second? Sorry about that, everyone. Motion is second to go into closed session. All in favor? Aye. 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 